Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this video, we'll show you how to set up a ProSoft Technology PLX32 Ethernet IP to PROFINET device gateway to connect Ethernet IP controllers to PROFINET controllers. The PLX32 EIP PND emulates a PROFINET RT device, allowing a Rockwell automation processor to share data with a PROFINET-enabled Siemens controller or a General Electric controller. Ethernet IP-enabled Schneider Electric controllers can also use this gateway. In this video, we'll configure the gateway to bridge communications between an S7 controller on a PROFINET network and a Rockwell Automation PLC on an Ethernet IP network. Here are the IP addresses and subnets of the devices we'll be communicating with. We'll cover assigning the gateway and IP address on each network in ProSoft Configuration Builder, setting up I.O. using the PND module map, and Ethernet IP Class 1 connection, bringing in the PLX32 onto the PROFINET network using Step 7, and bringing the PLX32 in as an I.O. connection on the Ethernet IP side using Logix Designer. You can also use RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000. Let's begin. First, we'll open up ProSoft Configuration Builder, or PCB for short, Right-click on the new module in the tree view and select Choose Module Type. In the Product Line Filter, select PLX30, and from the drop-down menu, we'll choose the PLX32 EIP PND, and click OK. Now we'll assign an IP address for the gateway. We'll expand PLX32 EIP PND and go down to Ethernet Configuration, and double-click here you can specify the network settings for the gateway. In the case of the PLX31, you'll have one port to configure, and with the PLX32, we have two ports which can each be configured with different network settings. In my case, the EIP network and the PROFINET networks are on different subnets, so I'll need to configure a port for each one. I'll change the IP address for Ethernet port 1 to 10.1.2.242. This is on the subnet for my Ethernet IP network. Also, we can change the net mask and gateway. And once this is done, I'll go down to Ethernet port 2 and set the IP to 10.12.2.10. This will work with my PROFINET network. We'll set the gateway address as well and click OK. Now, even though the module has a default IP address that's not on our subnet, we can still download to it by giving it a temporary IP address using our ProSoft Discovery service. Just right-click on the module and choose Download from PC to Device. Once this opens, choose Browse Devices. In the new window, you can see all the gateways available on the network. We'll find our EIP PND gateway. Right-click on it and choose Assign Temporary IP. And here we can choose what temporary IP to assign the gateway. I'll just type in the address that I entered earlier, since we know that it's available. And for me, that's 10.1.2.242. This will be the IP address on the Ethernet IP side. Click OK. And now make sure that the IP address is in the Ethernet field and choose Download to permanently set the IP address. Once the gateway reboots, we'll configure the PROFINET portion of the gateway. The first section, PND, is configuring the PROFINET device port, and the second, the PND module map, is used to configure how much data will be exchanged between this gateway and the PROFINET controller. We'll begin by configuring the port. Click on PND. Here you can see the input and output for the byte offset for our internal database. Essentially, we are selecting the size of the input and output sections for our database and where we want them to begin. A byte is half a word, so the input byte offset of 4000 is word 2000, matching up to our EIP output of 2000 and our Output of zero matches our EIP input of zero. Also, if you have to correct any byte swapping for the entire PROFINET network, you can do so here. 
I don't need to, so I'll leave all of this default. Next, click on PND Module Map. We'll add a row and edit the row. Here's where we will host and receive specific amounts of data for the Profinet controller. We'll go ahead and set up two I.O. connections. For this first row, we'll set the input data. Select Module and Slot, and from the drop-down list, I'll choose Input 256 Bytes. Once you're done, click OK. Now we'll add a second row and edit that row, this time for output 256 bytes. Click OK. That's one I.O. connection, so I'll add two more rows, and again I'll set 256 bytes of input and 256 bytes of output. And click OK, and then OK again to close the window. So that's all we need to do for the Profinet configuration. Now we can configure the Class 1 Ethernet IP connection. So expand EIP Class 1 connection, right click on Connection 1, and select Configure. When the edit window opens, we can see all the configuration options available for the Class 1 connection. We'll just set up the I.O. connections on the EIP side. We were in bytes before, but here we're actually using words. So 256 divided by 2 is 128, and we'll enter 128 as the size for both input and output. Uh, we'll leave the starting addresses at 0. Click OK. Now for connection 2, we'll do the same thing, but here we'll change the starting address to 128 to account for the data from connection 1, and then to 128 for the output data address. Once everything is set, we can click OK. Now that the port on both the Ethernet IP network and the Profinet network are configured, we can download the configuration to the gateway. Right click on the module's name and choose Download from PC to Device, or you can click on the Download to Device button in the menu bar. On the download screen, confirm that the IP that we assigned to the gateway is in the address field and click Download. The gateway will reboot with the new configuration, and we're done. That should do it for PCB. Now, I'm going to hand the video off to Chris Hines, who will take you through the process of bringing the PLX32 into your Profinet and EIP networks. Okay, so we're done here. Let's go ahead and open up step seven. So we'll click on New Project Wizard. We'll click Next. Now you choose your processor type. I am using a 315-2 PNDP, give it a name, click on next, and then we'll give the product a name, or project a name rather, and click on finish. All right, now from here what we'll do is we will click on Somatic 300 station, then we'll click on hardware, double click on hardware, and it'll open up our hardware window. Then from here we click on options, go down to install GSD file because the GSD is not installed with the software, you have to manually install it. Once it's there, it's there, so you don't only, only have to do this once. Browse to the location where you downloaded the ProSoft GSD file. You'll select the file, just keep clicking next. I already have it installed, so it's going to throw up a few cautions. And I just keep clicking next and yes. And you can go ahead and read the errors if you wish, but basically it's giving me a caution, letting know that it's going to overwrite. And then once it's done, click on close. Okay, from here we will right click on PNIO. We will choose insert Profinet network. We'll change the IP address to that of what we want the CPU to be. So this is your CPU's IP address, and whether you're using a router or not. I'm using a router, so I'm going to go ahead and enter those in. And then you'll click on New for New Network, and then click OK. And then that'll add your Profinet I.O. system, or Profinet Network. Now what we'll do, we'll go to the I.O. tree on the right, or the catalog tree. We'll expand Profinet I.O. 
and all the way down to additional field devices in the PLX31. We'll drag it over. Now we'll double click on the PLX31 and we'll change the name. But you know what? First, I want to make sure that I'm not stepping on anyone else. So we want to make sure we have a unique name on the network. So we'll choose a signed device ID or def device name, and it'll open up a window that'll show us the different devices on the network. So those are the two names currently on my network, and I'm using test five right now, but I'm going to go ahead and change that. So I'll click close, double click again. Now I'm going to change this to PLX31 test six. Then I'll click on Ethernet. I'll change the IP address to that I want my PND to be. And then we'll click OK. And I'm going to change the device number to 2. And then click OK. Now what we're going to do is click on Download. And we'll quickly download this to the PLC. So click on the Download button. The window is going to pop up. You can click on the View button here. And it will pop up the accessible nodes that you can download to or PLCs you can download to. Here we see that my CPU 315 is there. I'm going to choose OK. Now here's a key step we have to do. We have to assign a device name. So click on PLC, Ethernet node, assign device name. And when the window pops up, be sure that you check the appropriate gateway that you're configuring. There's mine right there with 5e as the last octet of the MAC address. I'll click assign name and you'll see it'll change to test 6. That's it. Click close. Now I'll arrange the screen a little bit so we can assign some I.O. to the gateway. And just like we did in PCB, we're going to choose 256 bytes of input, 256 bytes of output, and again 256 bytes of input, and 256 bytes of output. That's it. That's all we do. Now we'll click PLC. We'll click download, click OK, and now everything should be up and running. Now let's go ahead and open RS Logics, last step of the process. I'm going to start with a new project. So I'll click on new, choose the appropriate processor. I'm using an L36, give it a name, click finish. And I'm going to right click on Ethernet, choose new module. Hello, it's me again. I'm just going to guide you through this section. If you uncheck module vendor filter and then check ProSoft technology, you'll get a list of all our modules that you have identified on your system. If you need the EDS file for the PLX32 EIP PND, you can get it from the product page on our website under the download tab. So I'll select the gateway and click Create. We'll give the module a name. You can use whatever name helps you identify it. We'll enter the IP address of the gateway's port 1. And under Module Definition, I'll click Change. And here I'm going to add another I.O. connection. We have one by default. You can select the data type you'd like to use. I'll set it to Integer. And you remember the I.O. sizes that we chose back in PCB. 128 words or 256 bytes and I will set this for the input and output for both connections and click OK and yes to change the definition then OK again and close so now we have two IO connections set up to the gateway and I'll hand it back to Chris and now I'm going to choose communication who active choose my processor and then download and once the download goes through hopefully that IO light will stop flashing and I'll place it back in a run and everything looks to be good so let's go ahead and take a look at some data, see if we're moving data across appropriately. So I'll go into the controller tags, the Profinet device output data, and I'll just go ahead and manipulate some data here. So I'll change output words 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we'll open up step 7, 
and we'll take a look at some variables. Variables. We'll create a little variable table here. And first, I need to know the addresses that I'm using. So remember, 128 is the starting address for your inputs and starting address for your outputs. So let's go back to the variable window, variable table. There we go. Okay, and I will go ahead and create some variables here. So the first input that I had was an input word starting at 128. And you know what? I sh I'm going to go ahead and create a few of these. So I'll insert a range of variables. So input word starting at word 130 for length of 5. Now I'm going to create my outputs starting at 28. Change the format to decimal. And then there you go. Now we'll go ahead and click on the monitor button or the glasses up there and there you see the values. And let me go ahead and change this to decimal. All right, so there are the values match up to what we had entered in Logics. Now let's just make sure that they're going through correctly. We'll go ahead and change them one more time. I'll just put in 54321 and then go back to step 7. And there's 5432. So let's go back to RS Logic, see why that one's not showing up. So let's see. Let's go back to logics. And apparently I forgot to press enter. <laughs> so let me go ahead and press enter. And then quickly back to step seven and we should, there we go, there's our one. Okay, now for the output data. Let's go ahead and manipulate some output data. We'll click the modify button, modify our modified value or write our modified value and then we'll go back to RS logics and for that we'll open up our profinet input data and there we go and that's it for this training session till next time happy training Bye.